Okay, so it's Thursday night and I just got out of the gym and I also have an announcement to make. I am now in a committed relationship with you. You have my full attention now. So thank you for being so beautiful, heartwarming, breathtaking, stunning, heart-stopping, exotic. So anyway, I got a question from Martin and he writes in and he says, Hey man, just watch a lot of your videos and it all makes sense. Looks like you know what you're talking about. Really the best coach and give the best advice I've seen over the last few months. So thank you for that. No problem. And welcome to Team Fortune. I'm glad that you're joining the top 5%, the people who take action, the people who want to grow and develop and better themselves each and every day, unlike the mediocre 95% who is content with masturbation and watching Netflix all day long. So good for you. I'm happy that you're joining the team, recognizing some potential growth areas, and we're happy to have you. We need more like-minded people like you. There's not enough of us out there, but makes us special, right? So anyway, he continues and he says, my situation is a little bit specific, I think. I broke up with my girlfriend a few months ago. I did it because I was the only one who was bringing money and effort to the relationship. Now, I know it was a mistake. I gave her flowers, presents, attention, spent a lot of time with her, like a classic fucking simp. So before I go in deeper and read more into the email, I don't think giving is a bad thing. Your sole purpose of being in a relationship is to give, right? How can I make this girl happier? How can I make this girl smile? How can I make this girl laugh? right? That is one of the sole really reasons that you are in a relationship. How can I better her life? How can I help her out, right? You're a giver. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And I don't think that is necessarily simping. Now, when it's simping is, is when you're not getting reciprocation, right? So if she's, let's just say, nag, 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 yelling, 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 yelling at you, and you continue to give her gifts and shower her with affection when she's just acting cold to you, then you shouldn't be necessarily giving to the extent that you were probably giving. You shouldn't be giving a girl flowers after she yells at you. No, she doesn't deserve that, right? She deserves to apologize you for speaking up to you like that and speaking down to you, I guess, in a, in a sense, and treating you with disrespect, right? So there are ways where in which it would be simping, but at the end of the day, I don't think if you give a girl a gift once, once in a while, or you give a girl flowers randomly sometime, that's necessarily simping, right? It's when she doesn't deserve it, she hasn't treated you appropriately when it's considered simping, right? So again, when she's being an angel, she's being cute, she's being a sweetheart, She's being in her complete feminine energy. She's supportive of you, she's behind your mission and all that shit. Absolutely. But when she's ducking your calls and you're trying to get her attention, it's almost like it's a bribe for sex. That's when it is sipping. Okay. So again, sole reason for a relationship is to give. And if you're like, if you're going to the sun, I used to do this with a girl that I was dating. Every time I would go to a store, if I was out and I was going to go hang out with her, I knew she would like a specific, like a Coke, and I would go bring her a Coke. Or if I knew the girl liked a, a specific candy bar, right? A girl I used to date a couple years ago. She liked Kinder Bueno. Every time I went to the store, go pick up a quick Kinder Bueno for her, give it to her, and that's a small form of giving, right? It's not high investment, it's not jewelry every day, but it's still giving and it's showing that you care. Little things like that, right? So not necessarily a bad thing to do that, now, let's continue with the email. I haven't read more of it. So he says, after that, after I broke up with her, I made another mistake. I begged for her back and she rejected. So <clears throat> if you broke up with her and then you beg for her back and then she rejects you, it's almost like she wanted you to break up with her, right? She was probably, and again, you don't go into detail, but if you broke up with her, and you tried to get back with her and she rejects you, the really the reason probably is, is she probably did lose attraction for you and she probably wasn't that mad when you broke up with her because her attraction was low. 
And in a sense, when her attraction's low and she starts yelling and yelling and yelling at you, she's basically challenging you to break up with her. It's either fix your act or break up with me. And you did. Unfortunately, she called your bluff, right? Because you were acting needy and she probably knew he's gonna be back in about a week. He'll text me back in a week. And that's what happened. You texted her back or called her back and you started begging, acting weak, right? So you started acting weak, she saw it. She's like, no, nope, don't wanna get back with this guy. He's acting like a pathetic loser. I have no respect for that. I know I can get him back whenever I want. I know it feel, felt like when he broke up with me, it was an act, it was a bluff, and I could see right through it. I knew he wasn't man enough to actually walk away. Now, if you walked away for maybe a month, maybe two months, I guarantee she would have reached out to you. I guarantee it. Because rejection breeds obsession, and if you actually were able to walk away, she probably would have learned her lesson Man, you know what? Maybe I should have not yelled at Martin that time. Maybe I should have treated him a little better. Maybe I should have appreciated the flowers that he got me. He really did care about me. He really was a sweetheart. Maybe I should call him. Maybe he wasn't as weak as I thought he was, right? Now, she's not going to mentally say that, right? But that's how the brain's going to work. Her, her subconscious is going to be like, maybe he was actually really nice. And maybe he would, you know, maybe I, maybe I made a mistake here. He was alpha enough to walk away? Hmm. So that's probably what you should have done, just walked away and waited for her to reach out to you. Now, I will say this. When you do break up with a girl, it really is kind of your job to try to get back into a relationship with her. And it is your job to make a good case, like, hey, you know, I, I fucked up, I made a stupid decision, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, this was my fault. But her not taking you back tells me that her interest was really dropping and your gut instinct was right to break up with her, right? Because she wasn't giving the way that you wanted to, you wanted to, uh, you wanted to receive in a relationship. You gave, she wasn't giving back. So it was an un it was unbalanced. It was unbalanced. Okay. So I did two months of no contact. She's now visiting the same parties, liking my posts, randomly contacts me with stupid shit. I am polite, answering, doing small talks, <clears throat> but not giving her attention or starting conversation. I still want her back, but I think she will reject me again. How can I get her back and what should I do? <clears throat> so if she's liking your posts, you shouldn't do anything about that. If she's starting conversation with you, and I don't know if she's, it sounds like she's randomly contacting you. So if she's randomly contacting you, you need to assume that she wants to hang out with you, right? Especially if you want her back. So when she reaches out to you, she might come up with some stupid fucking thing, right? She might say, hey, wh what do you think about the World Series? Do you think the Dodgers or the Yankees are going to win? And she doesn't really actually give a fuck. Really what her, it is, is it's her excuse to try to talk to you. So you can just answer the question, Hey, I, I, I think Shohei Otani is going to fucking bomb the ball. I think he, the Dodgers are going to win this World Series. What are you up to? Let's watch a game together, right? You just convert it to a hangout, right? So that's why she's reaching out to you is because she misses you. You've done no contact. You've shown her that, yes, I can walk away from you. It's hard, but I still can fucking walk away with you, and I'm going to be all right down the line. And for her, she sees that, and she's like, oh, shit, he's... He's stronger than I thought. Oh, he's really in his masculine. Oh, I'm curious. I haven't heard from him. I don't know what's going on with him. I miss him a little bit. I'm going to reach out to him, right? So now she's coming up with dumb excuses to talk to you, and you're being polite. But what I would do is if she reaches out, invite her over. There's one reason why she's reaching out to you consistently. She wants to talk to you. She wants to see you. She misses you. So just invite her to fucking come through. Invite her to hang out. Meet up. Get a drink. Something, right? Have a good time. Just, just you two, just intimate setting. Like I always say, get in an intimate setting, have a glass of wine, have a beverage, make a margarita together. Uh, let the magic unfold. It's pretty easy from here. She's contacting you, so she wants to hang out with you. Don't fear the rejection. And if she rejects you, just say, hey, listen, you know, if you don't want to see me, that's totally cool. But hey, would love to see you down the line. If you want to 
change your mind, get in touch with me. We'd love to hang out. We'd love to catch up. That's it. Plain and simple. And she'll get in touch with you again. That's just what's going to happen. So she's consistently reaching out to you, and you might get a little pushback, right? You might get a little pushback from her. And, um, you know, that's fine. It, it, it can be hard to meet up with a former lover. She might try to do it in a non-threatening setting. And what I mean by that is she might try to go for coffee or something like that. I wouldn't agree to that, but... You know, I would try to get as intimate as possible, and it sounds like she wants to hang out with you. So next time she reaches out, invite her to hang out. So convert that co random conversation topic that she's she's talking about to a meetup. Just, just to a meetup. And this is why you should be practicing on dating apps or in person or with other girls. Just get finding ways to invite girls on dates. Switching a conversation topic to a date, right? And it's honestly quite simple once you do it enough times where it's like, hey, what's your favorite food, for example? You're talking to a girl, what's your favorite food? Oh, I love Thai food. Oh, I know this great Thai food restaurant. I gotta fucking show it to you, right? Come with me. It's so simple, right? So just practice converting a conversation topic to meet up. That's what you can do with her. And I'm telling you, no problem. She'll come out and hang out with you. So you're really doing well right here. And I really think you can convert this very shortly. So hope this helps. Peace and love.